I can't afford it. Not right now. I need to check with my partner. Have sentences like these been derailing your sales process? If so, then listen up because in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to explain to you what's really going on and a new way forward for you to handle these things that can stop the sales process. I'm Bernadette Doyle and for over 16 years I've been helping people like you, coaches, consultants, therapists, trainers, to get more clients. And today I want to talk to you about something that comes up as a huge sticking point when I'm helping people to get new clients because I have people say to me, Bernadette, I'm talking to people, they're really interested, and then they say they can't afford it, or they say they need to speak to their spouse, and I'm starting to wonder whether I'm talking to the right people, maybe I should go and get a whole new audience, maybe I could go and sell something different. Now, here's the thing you need to know. The answer when you get objections like these is not that you should be selling to some someone different, or that you should be selling, you know, something different. Here's what's really going on. I did this little diagram for you. So... What you can see is these um, these phrases, I can't afford it, I need to ask my spouse, the timing is wrong. What they really are, guys, is they're the tip of the iceberg. They are the tip of the iceberg. And I'm not saying that those things aren't true. It's like they, they may definitely be a factor. But in my experience, when you're selling change, when you're selling something that's transformational, it's a different type of sale. And one of the things that comes up when you're selling this is that under the surface, below the iceberg, are all these what I call restraining forces. You might also consider them to be hidden objections. Now, here's the challenge. Very often, the person that you're speaking to isn't always fully conscious themselves of what those hidden objections are. They just know they're feeling uncomfortable. They're feeling some discomfort about moving forward. And it's kind of easier then to pin that on one of these reasons here. So what's the way forward if you've been dealing with this? So the first thing I'm going to say to you is... Objections are not the end of the conversation, they are the start of them. So if you approach your sales conversations and you're already prepared for and anticipating sentences like this and you understand, oh, that means that there's something going on here, what that means is instead of then being deflated or having nowhere to go or getting stuck, when you hear those objections, you can have the action of, all right, game on. Like this is this is now the start of the conversation. This is why we're here. This is, you know, it's up to me to really start to ask questions now to understand what's really going on under the surface. Now, by the way, in order to implement that, that may mean that you have to deal with some inner stuff yourself around, is this pushy or, um, you know, feeling uncomfortable. You need to get past your own discomfort. Now, I personally think that selling is service and that if... Um, I am talking to a prospect who's really interested and they serve me up one of these objections and I don't take the time to explore what's going on, that I have somehow failed them, that, that I'm not there really serving uh, the client in the best possible way. So that's what enables me when I hear these objections to start asking questions. Now, the next thing is because we're going into areas where these objections, they might be subconscious or it might be sensitive areas, you need to have fantastic rapport and trust and a fair bit of sensitivity around exploring these objections with the other with the other person. And then the final thing that will really help you with this is right at the start of the sales conversation to, to flag that this may happen. So I prefer to position my sales conversations as not so much seller and buyer, but that the person in front of me is looking for my help, that they're coming to me because they have a problem in their life that they don't have to know they don't know how to solve. And they're seeing me as an expert. And if you bring that same mindset to your sales calls, this will really help you too. And the other thing you can do at the start of the sales conversation is say, look, what we're really looking here to do, to do today is to diagnose all of the things like that could be um, out and hidden that might be preventing you from moving forward. So that may mean that I'm going to ask you some probing questions today. And that may mean that it might get a bit uncomfortable, but I'm committed to this if you are. Is that Okay. So if you do that at the start of your sales conversations and you gather that permission, you, you've, you've already set it up. So later on, if you do get into the sensitive areas, you've got somewhere to go. So I hope you like that. I hope this has given you a new way of handling uh, um, objections on sales calls. Do drop me a comment below to let me know how this has impacted you and look out because I've got plenty more where that came from. See you soon.